Hello, my name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N R Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the math part, math portion of GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised journal test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. You're going to need it in order for you to be able to follow my work. The problem that we, are, that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 162. Page 162, number 3, the problem on the top of the page. I have put portions of the questions on the blackboard already to save time. Here is, here is what it says. You must have the book in front of you. Read the problem with me. It says for biological sciences and the health sciences faculty for biological sciences and health sciences faculty combined, biological sciences and the health sciences faculty combined, we are told that one third, one third of the female faculty, one third of all female faculty, and two ninth of all male faculty are tenured. The question simply is, question simply is, what fraction of all the faculty, or what fraction of all the faculty members in these two fields combined are tenured professor? Very straightforward, very simple questions. We have to first find out how many tenured professors are there in these two fields combined. We then we have to find out how many total faculty members are there in these two fields. And just take the ratio. That's all it is. That's simple. It, it, it's, it's listed under hard question. It is not so much hard as it is tedious. It is a very tedious question. There are many steps involved in it. And you have to make sure that you do not, do not lose your concentration. If you lose your concentration, you're going to muck it up. You understand? So let's keep going step by step. I need the room. I could very well actually start from the very bottom here, but I prefer to do it from the very top. Well, actually, let's start from here. What, what can we do here? Let's start with the bio, bio, biological sciences. So in the bio, if you read the chart, you must, you must look at the chart now. Turn the page over and look at the chart and look at the biological sciences and find out what percentage of the faculty members, uh, what Females are what percentage of the faculty members and you will rather the chart shows you what percentage of the female faculty of the college is engaged in biological sciences and you will see from the chart that 5% of all female faculty members are working in the biological sciences. Let's make a note here. 5% 5 5 female. In other words, in other words, if they had 100 female faculty in the college, five of them are working in the biological sciences. How many do they actually have? Look at the top of the, look at the, top of the graph and it tells you how many total male faculty members and how many total female faculty members. If you can see there, I'm blocking it with my hand here, at the very top here of the page. I don't know why I have to, I have to name you like this, I'm not going to do that, this is ridiculous. So you, you look at it yourself. On the very top of the page there, where it says total female faculty and total male faculty, and you will, you will see that it, they tell you that the total female faculty is 200. So we have to find out 5% of 200. Similarly, the same chart shows you what percentage of all the female faculties are engaged in the biological sciences. And if you look at the chart again, it tells you that there is, it is 10%. 10% male. Ten percent of, and how many male faculties are there in the college? It tells you that there are two hundred and fifty. Again, if you look at the top of the top of the chart, there it will tell you there. So, what is five percent of two hundred? Well, I know five percent of one hundred is five, so five percent of two hundred must be two times five, ten. What is ten percent of two fifty? That's too simple. It's just twenty-five. You just drop the zero, so that's it. That's thirty-five. Let's go on to health. We're done with this part. Let's go on to health. Look at the chart again in health sciences. What percentage of all the female faculties are engaged in health sciences? And the chart will tell you again the top part, the darker portion is the female, and in health sciences it looks like they have a hell of a lot more female faculty than they do male. And it looks to me like they're about 16%. 16% 16 female. 16% 16 female. So now we have to figure out. So now we have to figure out 16% of 200. We know there are 200 total female faculties. 16% of those 200 female faculties are engaged in health sciences. What is 16% of 200? 
Again, I know 16% of 100 is 16. 16% 16 of 100 is 16. Therefore, 16% 16 of 200 must be 32. What percentage of the male faculties are engaged in the, in the health sciences? Looks like 8%. So we have to figure out 8% of 250. How do you figure out 8% of 250? Well, you can do it with the calculator if you wish, but I don't, I don't like that idea. This is how I figure out 8% of, of 250. 250 is made up of three parts, obviously. It's made up of 100, it's made up of 100, it's made up of 50. I know 8% of 100 is 8, 8% of this 100 is 8, and 8% of 50, since 8% of 100 is 8, 8% of 50 must be half of that. So it is 8 plus 8 plus 6, 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 4 is 20. We got to add up all these faculties here. I'm going to raise these two numbers and line them up properly, 10 and 25, along with these ones, so they line up properly, 10 and 25. Now we're going to add them all up. And that will give us the total number of faculty members in the two department combined. 2 plus 5 is 7, and here we have 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 8 is 87. So that's the first part is done. Now we know how many total faculty members are working in these two departments combined. Our next job is to find out all these 87, how many of them are tenured. That's the next step. And finally, the last step, the third step would be, once we know how many of them are tenured, we already know how many total there are, we just take the ratio of the two and that's it, that's our answer. And the second step, I'm going to do it on the top. I'm going to start the second step on the top, and I'm, I need the room. So, one third of female, we know how many female are there, this is how many female are there, 35. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. So you see, I just made a mistake. That's not female. Female is 10 over here and 32 over here. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Let me erase this thing. One third of female and two ninth of male. Remember that. I should not have jumped ahead of myself because I'm trying to do two things at once. There we go. So, let's figure first find out total female before I muck it up. Total female. Well, total female, I'm going to circle it so you can see it because I almost made a mistake there. We know that there are 10, 10 female faculties in the biological sciences. We know there are 32 female faculties in the health sciences. So it looks to me that there are 42 female faculties altogether. 42. And we are told that a third of the female faculties are tenured. So let's find out the third of that. One third are tenured. So a third of forty-two must equal. Let's find out. Three goes into three goes into four. How many four? How many threes in a four? There is one. The one goes here becomes twelve, and it becomes four. So it's fourteen. Now let's do the. Now let's do the male. Total male faculties. And we're going to do them in a different colors and in a different way, right here. Total male faculties. There are 25 male faculties in biological sciences. And there are 20 male faculties in the health sciences. So we have 25 plus 20, that's 45. And we are told that 2 ninth of them are tenured. Two ninth, uh, ten here. Two ninth of forty-five. Well, how many nines in forty-five? Forty-five has five nines, so two times five is ten. So it looks like ten male faculties are tenured, and fourteen female faculties are tenured. We are almost there. We are almost there. Now we have to do the last step, and I'm going to do the very last step over here on the side. I'm going to raise this part. We don't need it. The very last step is to find out the ratio, the ratio of tenure to tenured professor as a, as a fraction of the total total people, total faculty. So tenured over total, which is of course 
10 here, we know now there are 14 of them here, 10 of them here. So there's 14 plus 10 over the total, which we know right here is the total. 87 is the total number of faculties in the two departments combined, of which 10 plus 14 are 10 years. That's it, that's our answer. We have to simplify it, or you can you don't or you can leave it like this, it doesn't really matter. Either way you will get the credit. Either way you will get the credit. But I like to simplify it. Now, the rule is that if you want to figure out if a number is divisible by 3, I have, I have talk, talked about it before many times. Obviously, there is no point talking about 2 because this is an odd number, we can't divide by 2. So, can these number be divided by 3? Well, it's very simple. If the sum of the digits, S, U, M, sum of the digit is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. 24, of course, is divisible by 3 because 2 plus 4 is 6 and 6 is divisible by 3. That's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is to just to know that 24 is divisible by 3 is very simple. What about 87? Well, 87 is a tricky one. So you add up the digits. 8, 8 plus 7 is 15. Since the sum of the digit is 15, and since 15 is divisible by 3, 87 is divisible by 3. So I'm going to divide top and bottom by 3. There we go. So how many 3's in 24? There are 8 3's in 24. How many 3's in 8? There are 2 3's in 8. The remaining 2 goes and joins this guy, becomes 27. How many 3's in 27? There are 9 3's in 27. So our final ultimate answer in its most elegant form is 8 over 29. And that is it. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the end of it. Now if you're sitting there and asking yourself, how the hell do these people expect anybody to solve this question in a matter of two minutes in the real exam? These are the kind of questions that separates this, the people who are, being, who are going to be in the top 5 percentile of the exam takers. Not the top 10 percentile, the top 5 percentile. 95 percent of the people, in my judgment, who are taking the exam will blow this question. Or better yet, they will not see these questions because these days the exam is computer adaptive. Back in the old days, everybody in the classroom who was taking the exam was given the exact same exam. The person who was going to score 780 in the math got the same exact exam as the person who was going to score 280 in the math. These days that is not the case. It is computer adaptive. Computer starts out everybody with a medium question. And if you get the medium question wrong, the first two, three medium questions, if you get any of them wrong, it demotes you to the easy question. But if you get all the medium questions right, one after the other, it graduates you to the hard questions. And if you get one hard question right, it gives you next hard one, it gives you next hard one, and it keeps on going. This, this type of questions is only going to appear on the on, on person's exam who is, who is looking at the top 5 percentile of the, of the score taker, of the exam taker. This is where they separate, I think the expression, I might mock up the expression, it's an American expression, I think this expression goes something like this, and it's a very sexist expression also. This is where they separate the boys from the men, I think, is the expression, I'm not sure, but that's what it is. If you're interested in learning a proper expression, I want you to learn something. Look it up. We know out. W I N N O W O U T. We know out. I will, I will not go into it right now, but I promise you I will cover it very soon in, in my vocabulary videos. Uh, I have not covered it, I don't believe so. We know out. Let me just double check. It only takes a second because there aren't too many words starting with W anyway. So it shouldn't take that long. And, oh. Nope. I've done four words just starting with W and it's not. It's one of them. I will cover it. I promise you in my vocabulary video. It's a good good, good uh, expression to know. Winnow out. It has a literal meaning and it has a metaphorical meaning. Metaphorically, winnow out means to separate the desired from the undesired. So this is where the winnow out the top uh, score, score, uh, scorer and, and not so top one. Do you understand? This is not meant for everybody. This was, this was as I told you before, before from the very beginning, it's not a hard question. It doesn't involve complicated mathematics, but it is a very tedious one and there are a lot of steps in it. And you have to take care of each step very carefully. Anyway, I'm done with my sermon, with my babbling, whatever you want to call it. I'm in. I will see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.